All right, everybody. Uh, any anybody find do you have any more questions or comments before we start the second part of this session with an in depth demo? Hi, this is Megan. Yeah, and I'm curious how to deal with multiple landowners. When you're. Filling out the fonts could I'll be working on a project in Denmark with two friends on a property. Yeah, the the. The best option I think we recommend was is, is to have like one of them be the spokesperson or or, or what have you. Um, for it, um, the other option is is to, you know, put one person in as the the actual first name and last name of the landowner, and then there's a, you'll see shortly there's a place to put in a, a company name that you could in theory put their, the other person's name in there. Okay. All right. First thing I wanted to do was just to uh, brief Dan briefly show, mentioned it um, was the uh, forest landing page or resource page, and I just wanted to show you how to get there. Uh, can somebody just confirm that uh, you can see my screen and and uh, I'm showing the main Forest Service homepage? Can see it. Okay. So on the home page, uh, there's a couple of links here, um, sort of in the center part uh, below the COVID information. There's a link here, file your forest operations notification fonds online. The same link is also found in the top of the right hand column of the home page. If you click on either of those links, it's going to take you to the forest uh, landing page. And this is the page that Dan mentioned has a lot of resources on here. Um, to help you, you know, get started using Forest and answering some of your questions. Uh, the first link here is to go right to Forest and file a, a fawn. Um, but further down here, uh, there's a little bit of background information on what Forest is, uh, the timeline that uh, Dan mentioned, as well as uh, things that you need to have before start start before you start using Forest. Um, the most important thing is a email address. And so we have a couple links to different options for free ones. Um, then there's also we point out that everyone that's involved in a notification will need to have an account already in Forest. And then there's some links there on, uh, on how to do that. Um, our frequently asked questions uh, was updated on March 5th. Uh, then there's also these video resources, and these are short. I tried to make them three to five minutes long about specific parts of Forest and how to accomplish a task in it, um, from setting up an account, to how to sign in, um, as well as the different sections of completing a notification. And then uh, we also have the recordings from our previous uh, overview and demonstration sessions we've already had. And um, we'll be adding today's here also. And then, uh, as Dan mentioned on his slide, um, you know, if you're frustrated or still have questions, you know, this is how you get a hold of us phone number, email, or through an online form uh, just to send to us. So that's the, the, the forest, uh, I'll call it the landing page. Um, so if you have questions or need to refer, refer back to this, um, session or previous ones, you can find it here on this page. So I want to start out. Um, I'm going to be. Uh, it's going to. I'm going to using the the our test environment for this demo. So um, you'll notice as we're going through here, there's going to be a every time I try to log into Force, there's going to be a pop up message just saying that hey you're using the test environment so um, when you're using force for real you won't you won't see that message but the pretty much everything else on the page looks the same the first step we want to do is create an account so when you go on the page in the lower right hand corner there's a create account button and you click on that 
and it takes you to the create an account web page and form. And this is um, a, a pretty basic uh, form that you would fill out to create any account online. And I'll just scroll down through here so you can see what we're going to be entering. A uh, person's name, if there's a company, you'd put it there. A phone number, uh, if you're a licensed forester, you put in the, your number. Uh, then an email address, as well as a password and confirming that. And then your physical and mailing addresses here. I just want to see what, show you what we're going to be doing here. So I'm just going to start filling out this form. phone number and you'll notice and I'll try to point it out as we're going through here um, we try to provide some information on uh, what we're expected to be entered in here so here you'll see that you know we're for the phone number we're just looking for numbers including the area code and then if it's a uh, if you have a license number you put it in here um, and I will just um, the one of the key things is um, to start out with either a, a capital LF uh, or FI if you're an intern and I'll just start typing and you'll see that there's a uh, another statement down here or additional information on what um, needs to be filled in here and it is specifically looking for capital LF or FI I typed in a lowercase L and it's saying it's not right so um, just just something to to pay attention to when entering the license number. Uh, key point here: need an email address. Um, every forced account needs an email address, and it works so you can only have one email address tied to a forced ID account, and the reverse is the same. You can only um, for each forest ID account, you can only have one email address. So I'll just put in the mail address I set up for this demo. And then you want to choose a password. Dan mentioned in his presentation that there are certain requirements that need to be met in the password. And you'll see they're listed here. And these are all based on the state of Maine security policy. And what will happen, is you'll see as I'm entering a password, um, once a requirement is met, it, it falls off this list. So by the end, uh, if you have a, a correct or adequate password, um, there would be no other statements down here or other requirements listed. And then uh, there's, you just want to confirm it just by retyping it again. And you'll notice once you've entered it correctly, the messages below disappear. And we'll enter, enter our physical address. <clears throat> and to keep it simple for now, we're just going to say that our mailing address is the same as our physical address. So we'll just check this box here. And I'm just going to show you if, if you miss entering something, the form is going to tell you it as well as take you to what is missing. So I, I took out our, my phone number, um, which is required information, and I click create an account. It takes me back up to where the phone number is, and there's a statement below it saying phone, phone is required. In the past, um, that, that little feature hadn't been present. So if somebody missed 
filling in a required field and they clicked create an account, <clears throat> nothing would happen. Uh, and you would think that something is broken. Um, it's just that um, you have to scroll back up to find out what's missing. So now that feature is in place, so it'll take you to what's missing. So I've filled out everything on the form and I'm ready to create an account. So I'll click create an account. And you get this message here saying that you're almost there. Uh, and just for security, an email message has been sent uh, to your account. Uh, so you want to check that. Uh, I'll click OK here. And I'm going to minimize that for now. And so now I'm going to my email account that I put in to set up my Forest user account. And you'll see um, it happened just that quickly. Um, I now have an email message here saying, hey, confirm uh, Forest user account. So just a sort of a basic message here, just saying uh, hello and welcome uh, to Forest um, that uh, re received a request to create a user account with this email address. And uh, basically to activate it, you'd click on the link below. Um, if this is something you weren't expected to receive uh, and it's an error, uh, don't click the link below and to contact the main forest service. Uh, important information here is this is your forest user ID number. Um, this is one place where you can find it. So if you keep uh, keep this email uh, for future reference. Um, you can always find your user ID there, and I'll point out when we get into Forest where you can also find it in there. So this is something we've expected to see in an email. So we're going to click this link to activate the account, and this is going to take us back to Forest. And to basically just close the loop, uh, you'll want to log in using the email address that you set up the account with. As well as the password that you put in and confirmed when you were setting up the account. Just click sign in. And again, apologize for some of these pop ups here. So you've now successfully logged into Forest. Um, and in the upper right hand corner of all the screens or pages in Forest, um, you'll find that you, your information that you're signed in as um, this user, Greg Lord, and then this force user ID number. So this is the same number that's in that email that you received uh, to finish setting up your account. Are there any questions at this point? All right. So I just want to give a brief overview of uh, this is this page is called the dashboard. And you can always get to it um, by this uh, dashboard link in the top uh, navigation or menu section of Forest. Um, just clicking on dashboard will always take you back to this page. Uh, there's these uh, main sections are my pending notifications. And then there is my active notifications. And since this is a new account, we wouldn't expect to see anything in either one of these sections. Uh, but the my pending notifications, this is where if you're working on notifications that um, you're still getting information for, they would be listed here as drafts. If there are ones that you've already done your part as a notifier, and you're waiting for other parties to finish their certification or uh, involvement on the notification, 
they would also be listed here as pending certification. And then under active notifications, these would be ones that have gone through the whole process and have been uh, made active and have been assigned a, a FON number here. And, and you'll see when we're sort of towards the tail end of the whole session here, I'll, I'll show you, we'll come back to a, a dashboard that has a lot more going on here and I'll show you how you can get to view either drafts or um, active notifications. So for now, we're gonna just jump right in and start creating a notification. So there's this button in the upper right hand corner of the dashboard page and we'll click on that. And so I'll just point out along the top here is sort of the path or timeline uh, that with the steps that we would take to get to uh, completing a notification. And you'll notice uh, this is the first step here, the overview section. And the first step is to identify your role in a, in a notification. And as Dan, Dan pointed out in his presentation, um, only a landowner or their designated agent can create a notification. And you can also, um, you know, identify um, if you're also a harvester or licensed forester. In my case, I don't have a license or I'm not a licensed forester, so this box is grayed out. I cannot select it. Um, but in your account, if you're a licensed forester, and you have that information in there, this would be active and available for you to, to select. Uh, point out also, we have these little information bubbles um, where we provide a, more information on what we mean by what is a landowner, uh, what is a designated agent, as well as what is a harvester operator. And then under the licensed forester, there is a link here that takes you to the law regarding uh, forester licensing. And so I'm just going to show if I'm just the harvester here, nothing else happens. I can't proceed with filling out a notification. Um, however, if I'm in this demo, I'm just going to say I'm the designated agent. So I'm going to select that. And you'll notice that the page changes a little bit. And it allows me to continue on filling out this notification. So the first part is selecting an operation start date. And so I'm just going to say it's going to start tomorrow. And it's we've put it in so it automatically calculates out for the first uh, for the full two years. And um, and if it the operation ends sooner, you can always close it out on the landowner report. And then the next part here is the property details. And this is where you're going to select the town that the activity is in, going to occur in. And so we'll we'll just select Abbott. And then we enter the nearest uh, all weather road. And then the the parcel size and acres. And then the last question in the overview section is whether this parcel has been purchased in the last five years. And I'm going to select no there. And again, uh, these the questions here um, throughout this process are ones that um, we really tried to keep um, very similar, if not exactly the same as they are on the paper form now. Uh, it was a big enough change just going from paper to digital, so we didn't want to introduce a lot of other things at this point. Uh, and actually, I don't think we have any intent to change it anyway. So. Um, so that takes care of the overview page. Uh, the next step is mapping. Uh, but before I go there, um, is there any questions on the overview section? There is a question in the chat uh, box from Bud. Can you delete a pending notification? Um, at, at this point, you cannot. But in our next, I think it's in the next set, set of updates to Forest, uh, you will be able to uh, delete, I should say you should be able to delete a draft 
uh, notification. If it's already out uh, in pending, meaning pending certification, and there are other parties that need to be um, certified the involvement, there's a couple of extra steps where if you're the notifier and you actually want to delete the notification, you would click on the withdraw notification button on the summary page, which we'll see here in a little bit. And then that would take it back to a draft status. And then at that point, you would be able to delete it. All right, and I should point out uh, that we're still on the first step here, um, but I can't I can't click. I can't jump ahead because I haven't. You know, moved off from the overview page, I can't jump ahead to any other sections. I have to get the first. Section done before I can move on to the next one. So our overview section is complete. We'll click the next button here in the upper right hand corner. And that takes us to the mapping section. And Abbott is the, the town we've selected to have our activity in. So that is centered on the map here. And this is very similar to Google Earth or Google Maps or other GIS. Uh, in the right hand side of the map, there's the zoom in, zoom in, zoom out buttons. Um, and then if you had a mouse wheel, you can also zoom in and out with that and then you can click and drag to move around as well the other feature i want to mention here is the the last of button here it looks like it has three little trays or layers if you click on that it allows you uh, to change your base map by default we have it display the topographic map but if you want to you can change that to the aerial or imagery base map. And then in here also um, are other features that can be turned off and on. Uh, by default, we have all the town boundaries on, uh, as well as all the LUPC zones, if you're in an LUPC town. They're all listed out and will be displaying on a map as well as if you're in a statewide standard town, these features will be displayed as well. Uh, and then the last one we have turned off by default um, is a couple of different critical wildlife habitat areas uh, based on US Fish and Wildlife Service. And those are Canada lynx and critical salmon habitat. And these are at the town level. Um, and it's just for reference, turn that off. And then I'm just going to quickly scroll back up to the top here. And then again, just to kind of close this, you would just click on those three trays again to close it. And you'll notice um, Abbott is a statewide standard town, but you do not see the features yet. Uh, you have to zoom in to a certain level, and then those features uh, around statewide standards will display on the map. So you can see the different points and, and buffers around the different features here. So you want to kind of navigate to where you want to map your activities. And then there are these three buttons in sort of the middle part of the screen to draw either a harvest, road construction, or water crossing. And we'll just start out by drawing a harvest. And when you click on um, the button in the left hand side of the map, this little information uh, will display about if you're not familiar with draw drawing a harvest area, it tells you how to do that. And it's, it's basically just drawing a polygon. Um, so to start that, you just click once wherever you want to put a corner or a starting point. And then you just click and drag. And then when you want to change direction, you would just click again. And as you do that, once you, you've clicked that second point, you'll notice that it's now starting to calculate the acres. 
Uh, and like Dan mentioned, it's, you know, we're just, you know, a, a representation of what um, your harvest may look like here. And each time you want to change directions, you just click and continue dragging. And then when you want to finish the drawing, you just double click on the point and that stops the drawing. You can, if you decide, well, I, I want to make some tweaks to this, you know, you can just click on one of the dots and drag it wherever you want to change the shape to. Um, you can also add angles. If you just on the line itself, there's this dot kind of floating on it. If you click and drag that, that'll change the line as well. And you can do that however you want to. Again, doesn't need to be survey quality, just a representation of, of the activity. And then down at the bottom here is uh, it's listing out the, the mapped activities. Um, the first column here is the activity ID, which is number one. And you'll notice it in the polygon itself is the number one. So they're connected here uh, for reference. And if, uh, if you're good with the shape, you'd click save. If you want to start over completely, you can hit cancel and it removes the, the harvest polygon and you just start over. Uh, for now, we'll just click Save. And you'll notice that all those little dots have disappeared and I can no longer change the shape. However, I can, if I want to, I can delete the shape completely and start over that way. And you'll notice that it calculated the acres for that shape. The next activity you can map is a road construction. And again, just click on the road construction button. You'll have some instructions on how to draw a road. And basically, you're just drawing a line on the map to represent the road construction. So we'll just start our road. Similar to the harvest, just click once to start the line. And you'll notice that immediately it starts calculating the length and feet. And just to change the direction of the line, you click once and then you start dragging it a different way. And then to end it, you just double click. And it shows you the complete length and feet. And then down in the table is the, the number two representing the road construction. And then up here, hopefully you can see it's right on the corner there is the number two. And again, if you like the harvest area, if you want to change your shape, you can either click and drag one of the existing dots, or you can create another one by just clicking on the line and dragging the dot, the new dot to a different place. With the road construction, you can uh, you have a question here about if it's uh, temporary or permanent. And in this example, we'll just say it's a permanent road. And similar to the harvest, I have the option of saving it or canceling it. And, and canceling will remove the road completely. But we'll just say it's good to go and we'll click save. And again, the road, all the points have disappeared so I can't edit it anymore. Um, the only option I have down in the table is to delete that road and draw a new one. The last activity you can draw on the map is water crossings. So we'll click on the water crossing button. And again, in the left hand side, you have instructions on how to draw or how to, yeah, how to draw a point that would indicate the location of a water crossing. And that's represented by the X here. And we'll just say there's gonna be a crossing here. And it assigns it the number three, which corresponds with the number three down in the table. Like the road, uh, there's a question about if it's temporary or permanent. We'll say it's permanent. And then this, there's a question about structure type. And is it a road construction or a skid trail? And we'll say it's road construction. And again, if if you need to move this, you just click and drag it to move the crossing to wherever you want it to be. 
and you can do this until you hit the save button down below. And then if you decide you don't want to have this crossing, you can hit cancel and start over with a different crossing. Um, but we'll click save here. And I can no longer move that move that water crossing anywhere. And so I just want to just show you that, like Dan mentioned, you can actually have multiple activities in a town. So you can um, you can draw another harvest if you want to, if it's in a different part of the town. Just want to show you that you can do that. And um, I'll just show you that you can delete it as well. And it just prompts you to make sure you're you're sure that you want to delete that activity. And we'll just click yes. And that removes the that harvest. But again, you can have multiple harvests, multiple road construction, and multiple water crossings crossings in the same town. And that takes care of mapping. Uh, are there any questions uh, before we move on to the activity details? Greg, I had a question. Um, if you're in a LUPC town and you were building a road and a water crossing, you wouldn't have you could just draw those two in you wouldn't have to draw the harvest is that correct that is correct yeah you could yeah it it, it it's the harvest is not required um, right okay yep yeah, yep yeah. thanks mm -hmm. all right so the next uh, step on this path to completing a notification is the activity details and uh, you click next. And we tried to make this uh, in this demo, it doesn't really show it because we mapped uh, all three different types of activities, but like what was just mentioned or asked if you needed to have a harvest, um, if you were just mapping a road construction, um, you would not see the harvest activities here you would just see the road construction questions. And then um, if there were water crossings, you would, those would be displayed here as well. Um, so, you know, in the paper form, you see all the questions for everything. In here, we tried to make it so that based on what you're mapping, you would only have to ask the question, answer the questions related to those mapped activities. So the total harvest acres, and I'll just uh, demonstrate an additional check here. So I decide I want to harvest 650 acres. There's a, a note here that says, hey, it has to be less than the 550 acres that you stated in your, in your overview. Um, so, I'll just say 500. And you'll notice, I'm not sure if you noticed when I was messing around with the acres, but we have some questions here displayed dynamically based on the harvest size, um, specifically around the clear cut questions. Um, so if, if it's a, a 50 acre harvest, it only displays the question related to clear cuts larger than 20 acres, but drops off um, or does not display the question around creating clear cuts larger than 75 acres because your harvest is less than 75 acres. And then similarly, if you were saying, okay, it's only a five acre harvest, neither one of those clear cut questions are displayed. So just to show you, there's some dynamic um, features here based on how you're answering previous questions. So just for now, we'll just, it's 500 acres. And then again, these are similar questions that you would see on the paper form. First one uh, is around if the land is in tree growth, say yes. Uh, then the next one has to do with the, if the land use is changing from growing wood uh, forest products in the next two years. And Dan kind of mentioned, he mentioned it in his presentation earlier. Um, so if we say yes, there is gonna be a change. Um, we have these two additional uh, questions that are presented to you. The first one has to do with what, what is the land changing to? And um, as Dan mentioned in the past, 
we've just been sort of open and you would fill in whatever you want, either garden, lawn, golf course, whatever. Um, but we decided we would just, we don't need that level of detail. So we came up with these sort of broad categories for changes of land use. And you would just pick one of those and then you would enter the acres that are going to be changing use. So we'll just say as a residential, uh, five acres are changing from residential. And then we aren't creating any 20 acre or 75 acre clear cuts. And again, there are these um, little information bubbles here. And just we want to make sure if you're that you're not counting acres that are being converted to other use as clear cut acres. Then there are questions about um, if you're harvesting near water, a yes or no. We'll say yes for that one. Um, and then there's one about if you're adding wood to a stream that is consistent with Maine Forest Service Chapter 25 rules. And if you're not sure what Chapter 25 rules are, this is a link. So when you click on it, it's going to take you to the Chapter 25 rules so you can read more about that. And we are going to say that we are not adding wood. Um, but uh, Abbott is a statewide standard town. Um, so we're presented with those, uh, the three options here. And we'll just say it's 60 square feet, um, as well as there is a link here to uh, chapter 21, section seven, um, if you want to read more about that. This is um, one of the uh, little bugs we're working on right now. Um, these two questions would be displayed if you're in LUPC town. Uh, right now they're display, being displayed for all road construction activity, um, but you can put in zero uh, for square feet that are being altered. And then if it's in a FEMA floodplain zone, again, these would be just displayed in the LUPC if you're doing activity in an LUPC uh, town and we're working on getting those removed at this point. Uh, and then there's the water crossing activities and it's just uh, more of a statement. There really aren't any additional questions to be answered. Uh, just saying that you've mapped water crossings as part of your operation and just review the uh, requirements on the summary page. And that takes care of filling out the activity details section on this journey to getting to a notification. Are there any questions around that? Uh, no questions in the chat box. OK. Thank you. So the next step uh, here is uh, adding the other parties to this notification. Uh, the first one is the landowner. So been in communication with the other parties on this notification. They've all got their accounts set up in Forest and they've provided their uh, the last name they entered into their account on Forest as well as their Forest ID number. So I'm going to plug those in now. And uh, like I mentioned, I think earlier, uh, there's this button that says five, find landowner. I think that the wording of that's going to change to something like confirm landowner information or something to that effect. Um, and so you click on that. Excuse me. And what it's going to show you is if your information is incorrect in either of these boxes, it's going to display this message saying, hey, there isn't a match with these two. So double check your information. And I realized that I did not add another two at the end here for the landowner's forest ID number. So I'll click find landowner. And their information will dis be displayed here. Um, if for some reason uh, this isn't the right landowner, um, you do have the option of removing them and, and plugging in a different one here. Um, and again, just to repeat the we're you know just trying to protect all the people involved in forest and the users of it to 
you know, we didn't want to have just sort of a shopping list for everyone to see about all the different people in force. That's why we're asking to enter the last name as well as the forced user ID number. And then there are these two additional questions here around the landowner. First one is around the number of acres they own in Maine. And then the other one is um, we did actually bring this um, forward from the landowner report. Um, so uh, it has to do with the ownership type. And again, there are these information bubbles next to each to provide more information on what we mean by each of these land ownership types. And we'll just say that's a non-industrial land. I'm the designated agent filling this out. My information is already in here. So the last party we need to add for this one is the harvester operator information. So again, I've already been in communication with them. They've already given me their information to plug them into Forest here. They've already set up an account in Forest and have an ID number that they can provide to me. And then just again, click on the find harvester operator to confirm that that information is correct. And it displays that harvester operator. And again, if this isn't what you expected, you can click remove here and put in a, a different one. And that is the steps to adding um, the harvester operator. Um, if there was a licensed forester, uh, you could add them as well here. Um, but for this demo, we aren't going to add one. And that that are the that completes the steps of uh, adding all the different contacts for a notification. Um, and the next step is just reviewing everything in the in the summary section. Is there any questions related to the adding contacts to a notification? Uh, no questions in the chat. All right. So we will move to the next step here. So the summary page is just reviewing what you've already entered in all these previous steps here, these four steps. And you'll notice that the status here is in draft. And so we're just going to go down through here and review what we've already entered for this notification starting with the different contacts. You know, these are all uh, the correct people that are gonna be involved in this notification. There's this checkbox down at lower right here. And the wording's a little bit different from Dan's uh, slide there. Uh, now says I certify that this information is correct. And we will just check that. And that just closes up that section. If you need to look at it again, you would just uncheck it to see it. The next part is reviewing the overview section. The first, first page we went to is start filling out this notification. If you're looking through this and you find that there is a, a problem um, with some information, you can just go back and click on that, on that section. And if you need to change information, you can. Um, and um, I pointed out earlier when we were sort of, I don't know if we're on the overview or the mapping, but we couldn't click on the steps ahead of us because we hadn't got to them yet or hadn't completed them. Now that we've gone through all of these, we can actually jump around to different parts of the of this if we need to change answers. Um, but just to continue reviewing the summary page, we'll click back there. And we built this so that if you had to go back and change something or you left the summary page for some reason to review another section, it's going to redisplay the sections on the summary page you've already reviewed. Um, that is just to make sure that when you're going through and reviewing everything that it, it's all done at one time or uh, just to make sure that if there are changes that you have the opportunity to review them here on the summary page. So again, for the contacts, we'll just say it's correct. Uh, for the overview, we'll say everything is correct with that. Check the box. 
and then we have the the map. This is the activity we we drew on the mapping section. And again, you can zoom zoom out or zoom in, can move around. Um, there's some functionality here, like any map. You as well as you can go in here and change the background, the base map to imagery if you want to. As well as if you wanted to turn off and on any of the other layers here. The only thing you can't do here is add new activities. If you wanted to add new activities, you would go back to the mapping page here and add them there. This is again the summary page, and we're just reviewing the activities you've already mapped. And then there's the table below listing out what those each activities are and what they entail. And then we'll just click that that is correct. And then we're reviewing the activity details or the third step here on the notification. And again, it's just a review. Um, there are links here. These uh, the chapter 25 rules is a is an active link you can click on and go to. As well as the section seven. And again, these two questions on the road construction are just for LUPC town, but for now they're displaying on everyone. Um, so just be aware of that. And if it's all correct, check the box there. And then it just displays our uh, contact information. The district forester that covers Abbott is here, as well as the Forest Protection uh, Regional Office. Uh, if you have questions for them, uh, their information is here as well. And this is uh, this wording is going to change because it, it it doesn't quite make sense. Uh, um, I think it's I'm not sure exactly what it's going to say, but it's it's not going to indicate that you need to, as a notifier, say that. Our information is correct here. Um, it's just an acknowledgement that you've seen it. And then the next section are, is the important reminders. The the first few here are just kind of a standard reminders. Uh, just you know, check with the town or local municipality for any ordinance uh, that might pertain to your activity, um, as well as being aware of. Um, or familiar with all the rules uh, before you start your activity and um, just plan the harvest well in advance. And then it displays specific reminders around the mapped activities. Um, there are no harvest reminders or road construction reminders, but there is one uh, related to the uh, water crossing um, that the permit needs to be submitted uh, you know, 60 days prior to the construction of it. And then there are general reminders, and these are have to do with uh, either forest quarantine or critical wildlife habitat. And each of these, I'm not sure if you can tell, but each of these are links to specific information. Um, you click on Gypsy Moth, and it's going to take you to our website and specifically to the Gypsy Moth, moth quarantine information. Just that and that. And then you'll notice that there's a certify button at the bottom that's grayed out as because we haven't checked off all the boxes here is correct. And again, the wording of this will probably change as well. Um, just to acknowledge that you've read this. Um, but we check that box. We've completed our review of the summary section. And now this certify button is active. And then we'll click on that. And as designated agent, I'm presented with these three statements that I have to acknowledge. Um, just first one is that you've answered the questions to the best of uh, your knowledge and belief. And then the next one is um, that uh, landowner um, a designated agent, so the landowner signs in and certify that I'm their designated agent. And then the last one just is a 
understanding there may be other parties out there that need to certify their participation on this notification before it is submitted to the main forest and becomes active. And you'll notice that this acknowledge and certify button is grayed out. Excuse me right now. But once I check that last box, it is it is available to click on. So I'm just going to pause here for a second. If as the notifier, I decide there's something I need to change on this notification before it goes out to the other parties, I can at this point click cancel and I can go back and all the steps are still available for me to make changes to. Once I click the acknowledge and certify button, um, this notification goes from a draft status to a pending certification status and that limits um, your immediate steps, I'll say, um, on what you can do with this notification. So once I click Acknowledge and Certify, uh, the status changes to Pending Certification, and emails are sent to the other parties on the notification for them to certify their participation on this notification. So that would be, mean there would be emails going out to the landowner and the harvester. And so I'll click the Acknowledge and Certify button here. And it just a uh, note here just says, OK, you've done your part. Um, and you can view the summary page of this notification. And it's not editable at this point unless you withdraw it. And just to click OK. So a couple of things have changed here. Um, there's no longer that sort of path at the along the top or the different steps to completing a notification. We're now just on the fawn summary page. The status has changed to pending certification. And the only option we have here is to withdraw this fawn. And that would you click on that and that would kick it back to a draft status and you would be able to change anything on the notification. And at this point, um, all you can do if, if you're good with what's been entered is you would just wait for the other parties to uh, certify their participation. And it may be worth, um, unless they're right there with you, might be worth reaching out to them just to let them know, hey, you're going to be getting some emails here shortly asking you to uh, certify your participation in the notification. Um, and so on this summary is just, um, it's um, just going to briefly go down through here. It's, it's the summary page all over again. You just don't have the check boxes in the lower right hand corner uh, to check it. It displays all the same information that's on this notification. As well as if you wanted to, the map is still um, somewhat dynamic, <clears throat> excuse me, um, as you've seen before. And you're just seeing what's already been entered as well as contact information for us and all the same important reminders and active links here for different quarantine or critical wildlife habitat information. I'll just scroll back up to the top here. So as a notifier, now I just wait for the other parties to certify their involvement in this notification. So before I change rules, um, are there any questions on the summary page? Uh, there was a, a lot there. I don't see any questions in the chat. OK. So now I'm going to change roles. Um, I had put this notification in as a designated agent. So now I'm going to change my role as if I'm the landowner who's involved with this notification. So I'm going to just sign out of Forest here. Close this. Close this. So now I am the landowner. I'm looking at my email and I'm waiting for that message to come in. And I have this in my inbox saying, hey, there's this forest fawn pending certification. And this message uh, just says, hey, you know, Greg Lord, the designated agent, <clears throat> created this uh, notification 
uh, through forest it's pending certification until all the parties um, certify <clears throat> and that i've been identified as the landowner on this on this fawn and that i must certify the information is correct and i understand the responsibilities uh, before the fawn is submitted to the main forest service uh, then we provide some just some basic information around this notification um, you know who's who created it the town it's in and then the start and end date of it and then we provide a little bit more instruction on okay what are your options um, either you can approve approve the notification if you want to um, continue um, with it and be involved with it or you can uh, decline and uh, if you don't approve of the notification and then there is this link at the bottom to either approve or decline your involvement with this fawn so i'm going to click on this link as a landowner it takes me to forest and has me log in and now i'm logging in as the landowner So I'm entering my email address and my password. For my forest account in in forest. All right, clean this up a little. And what this does is it takes me directly to this. Notification to. Uh, certify my involvement with it and the trick here is it, it, this is a simple simplest way to do this is to go from the email click on that link and log into forest and it takes you right to what you need to do the other way to do it is if you just logged into forest outside of the email you would go to your dashboard and then you would have to find this notification um, that requires your involvement um, so it's a, an easy way to do it or a simpler way is just to go from the email, click the link in there, and it takes you right to where you need to go. So we are, you know, on this notification, the summary page, it's pending certification. If immediately right off, I don't want to be involved with this notification, I can decline it. And it, it kicks it back to the designated agent. Um, Otherwise, you would just go down through here and review the information that's been entered. And again, you would just certify that the information is correct on each of these sections. If there are questions, if you, as the landowner, if you have questions about some things here, um, it's expected that you would reach out to the designated agent to, to make sure um, that you understand what's going on or, or Make sure that everyone's understanding what's going on on the notification. Um, and it, again, if there's things on here that need to be corrected, you would just as the landowner decline it and it kicks it back to the designated agent to make the corrections and updates. But for now, we're just going to say that everything is good on here. Again, the same functionality on the map here, um, as we saw as the designated agent, the landowner can change to the imagery as well as all the other features here. And then and see the list of activities that are going on or proposed. And then again, reviewing the activity details. And all the links here um, are still active. Um, I should point out um, if it's not obvious that you're reviewing exactly what the designated agents reviewed um, every all the parties on a notification are reviewing the exact same information again if there's need to reach out to the force service their information is here and then and all the different uh, important reminders around this and then the different quarantine information also is active for the landowner to review also if they want to and then once the last checkbox is checked 
the certified button becomes active. And as the landowner, I am presented with a uh, similar but slightly different statements here to acknowledge. Um, landowner, I certify answers to the questions are correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. And if there's a designated agent, uh, I've given them responsibilities. And then if there are other parties involved that they need to certify their participation before it'll be sent to the Forest Service to become active. Once those three statements are acknowledged, the acknowledge and certify button becomes active. And I can click on that. And I've successfully certified my involvement in this notification as the landowner. And I can still go in here and look at the summary page if I want to. And at the top here is just sort of a running, um, you know, who's who's certified this notification so far and when they did it. And so again, you as a landowner, you, you would see exactly what the designated agent would see for just reviewing the summary. You can't, there's check boxes are gone, uh, but you can still go in here and look at everything. And I should have pointed out earlier, um, so I'm now in here as the landowner in the upper right hand corner, uh, it should, says that I'm signed in as landowner Fonz and with this other force user ID. And as the landowner, I am now completed my part of certifying this notification. So I'm going to sign out here. So that, and, and the last party to certify on this notification is the harvester operator. So now I'm changing my role again. I am now the harvester operator on this notification. So I go to my email. I have this message. It looks very similar to what we saw as the landowner. The only difference here, it just says uh, that I've been identified as the harvester operator on this notification. But all the information here is the same as we saw with the landowner. And again, there's a link down at the bottom here to approve or decline my involvement with the notification. So we'll click on that. Again, it takes you to Forest. And I'm logging in with my email. Password for um, I'm now the harvester operator, so it's this is my account I've set up in Forest. And again, when you click on the link from the email and you log in, it's going to take you directly to this notification that needs um, your certification. And I'm just going to breeze down through here. We've already seen this twice as a designated agent and landowner. The same steps are, are here for the harvester operator to do. Um, if they want to decline completely their involvement, they can click decline and it takes it back to the designated agent. Um, otherwise, you would just go down here and again review everything. If it's correct, you would check these boxes. If it's some questions, reach out to the other parties on the notification to make sure um, that what's being stated in here is correct and everyone are, understands what's going to be going on here. Again, map, same functionality. A list of the mapped activities again. We're reviewing the activity details. Links are still here active for further reference. Main Forest Service contact information, as well as the important reminders. And then once all those are checked again, certify button becomes active. Then you'll notice a little bit different as the harvester operator. I only have two statements I have to acknowledge. Uh, the first one's just a 
answers to the questions are correct to the best of my knowledge and beliefs. And then if there are other parties out there that need to certify that, again, until they all have certified, it won't be sent to the main floor service. So once that's checked, again, the acknowledge and certify button becomes active. Um, so for this demo, we've seen all the steps. So we know that this is the last person or last party that needs to certify their participation in this notification. If for some reason there needs to be a change on this notification, you can still click cancel here and decline it, kick it all the way back to the designated agent to make those changes and then repeat the steps we just took. Once we click acknowledge and certify here in this demo, um, being that this is the last party to certify, a um, couple things happen and you'll see them here pretty short, pretty quickly. Um, the notification becomes active and it's assigned a, a notification number. So we'll click acknowledge and certify and it says you've successfully certified this notification it's been submitted to the forest service and is now active we'll scroll back up to the top here and you'll notice there are some different things here so now there before it just said fawn summary now it has an actual number and the status has changed to active and you're also, uh, there's a button here to print the posting. So you click on that and it's going to allow you to print a posting that looks, uh, if you're familiar with these, it looks very similar to what we provide now. Um, and then we also, since this is an active notification, um, we present right at the very top now the information around landowner reports uh, just to get people thinking about that. Not that we want to be thinking about landowner reports, but just to be aware it's coming at the end of the year. Um, and like Dan mentioned, you'll be able to do this right here in Forest. Um, now for 2021, you'll have a link over here to the right that says something like complete landowner report. And click on that and that'll take you to the landowner report section. The one uh, bug we're working on right now that Dan mentioned is um, there is no way to print out this summary page. Um, again, I'll just scroll down here briefly. This is all the information we've already looked at several times, um, but there isn't a way to print it out. But my hope is um, that this print posting button will print the posting um, and either there's gonna be another button here to say print summary page or you would go to the browser window and click print here and it would allow you to print the summary page right now that points you to this posting as well. So that is all the steps to getting a notification number. Um, there are a couple of other things I want to point out uh, but, but before I do, are there any questions? Hi, this is Laura. Um, yeah. Will we get notified when the other parties, as if we're designated agent, will we get an email saying that the other parties have certified it? Um, at this point, it's not there. Um, it will be. Um, but I will I will show you here. Um, uh, you won't get an email, but if you logged into Forest um, and you go to the dashboard, um, you'll see that there are these. Um, this has changed a little bit, so your active notifications, it would be listed down here once it's all certified. Otherwise, it would stay up in the pending notification as pending certification. Uh, okay. Your... okay, so for now, we just have to keep checking our account for the notification. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, Greg, this is Bud. I have a question about how, um, as a designated agent, how would you um, submit an amendment to an notification that's already been certified? 
So we're we're working on the ability to uh, add attachments to the notifications that are active. Um, I don't know if that's in the next round of updates, but um, conceptually, I think there'll be a place to. I'm assuming it'll be on the summary page. There'll be a place to attach amendments. And then probably the status will change to say something like active dash amended or something like that. Um, it, it, at least at this point, that's what it's the plan is. OK, and would that be the same process for um, submitting supplemental forms like Section 5, Section 4s, um, those type of documents? Those are going to that's um, a separate process completely. OK, for the for you're meaning like other permits. Yeah, like uh, let's say a PFW harvest that requires a supplemental section five. Right. Yeah, that would be. Um, yeah, it's not built into here, um, but you could attach it. And that would be part of the, the next round of updates you're saying? Yes. So in the interim, those should still be uh, submitted uh, by paper? Yes. So I did want to show just um, back on the dashboard. Um, page um, when we first saw this it was just when we created a new account so there was nothing going on in either section um, but now we're logged in um, and up in the upper right hand corner we're logged in as a different person so there's more things going on here so there are two notifications that needed my attention uh, they're pending certification so i click on the link here and go through the person process of um, certifying my involvement with it or not if I click decline. Um, this would be similar if it was in if you had one in draft, you would click on the link uh, to view and it would just take you back to wherever you left off on the notification itself. And then for any that are active, um, you'll see here they all have notification numbers with them. And you would click on the view link on the right here to to review the just to see the summary information about it and i believe i think there'll be a link here to fill out landowner reports too i'm not positive on that for each of these that are need a landowner report completed for them And the only other thing I wanted to show you is if you needed to update information in your profile or your user account, there's this my profile link in the top or top right corner here. And it allows you to go in here and, and update your information. Name, phone number. Um, the only thing you cannot update is the email address because that is directly tied to this user ID. If there's a different email address, then you would create a new account in Forest. Um, but you can also update your physical and mailing address as well here. And then you would just click update my profile with those updates. So that's all I wanted to show um, for today. Um, this Late summer and fall, we'll have some demos on uh, the landowner report part of this. Um, are there any other questions? Question, Greg. Yeah. Uh, this might be related to what Bud was asking. Uh, is there a plan to integrate FOPs and PBRs into this system? In my vision, yes, um, it's just going to take a little while to get there. 
um, we're still, you know, you know, trying to get other parts of force to work, um, you know, getting the ability to complete notifications that are uh, for people that don't have computers. Um, uh, and I don't, I can't remember if either one of us mentioned it, but there's also the, uh, we want to add the feature if a licensed forester has uh, fiduciary responsibilities or are employed by the landowner that they don't need to get the landowner certification. They would just click a box, provide the landowner's information, and then they would uh, be able to proceed without the step that we showed about being a landowner and certifying their involvement with it. So those are two things that we're working on as well as we have some other minor updates to do. Uh, but that's a, a long answer to say that hopefully we will get there. And the goal is to have this be sort of a a process where if you need to do activity that it would take you through all the steps you need to complete to get there uh, from doing a notification to doing a, a FOP or uh, a road construction permit or whatever. Um, ideally, it would be nice to have this whole process done right here. For, for now and for the foreseeable future, all all permits or variance applications that are related to the harvest, it's all done on paper. Correct. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. Um, if there are no other questions, um, Again, thank you all. Um, and I'll repeat again that if you have questions, comments, or criticisms, um, please send them our way. Um, we want to help you out with this new process and, and to improve it as we go. So uh, again, thank you all uh, for taking time out today to be with us. And, and hopefully it was inf informative. And um, yeah, have a good day.